Hi, I'm Kate Trombo, Vice President for Federal Policy at Results for America. Uh, appreciate Josh that great context and overview of the managing for results theme within the blueprint. Um, and just to, you know, because it's good to have reiterate themes over and over again, we'll talk through the three things that Josh highlighted around the managing results were statewide setting and creating statewide strategic goals that align with governor's priorities, creating a statewide performance management system, and creating a culture through communicating those results. Um, we are going to take in our panel those three themes and try and expound on them a little bit through folks that have a lot of experience with managing for results. We'll hear from three states, Colorado, Tennessee, and Minnesota, which overall have excelled uh, in aligning and connecting the managing results themes. Um, the success of these states is apparent through their executive leadership focus and commitment to results and, and data and evidence as well. Um, beyond that commitment, they have ways to manage performance and leverage performance data and have applied that performance data and results in some of the instances to inform their budgets. And they've each done it in a different way. So the goal for today's panel is to highlight and showcase the various ways these states have taken to different to, and there are different approaches to managing for results. So this will hopefully bring the blueprint strategies and actions to life. And to do that, we have these three wonderful panelists, Pete Bernardi, who's Minnesota's chief data and evaluation, excuse me, chief data and evaluation officer at the Minnesota Management and Budget Office, Adam Jarvis, who's the deputy director of Tennessee's customer focused government, and Heather Velasquez, who's the deputy director of operations and cabinet affairs in the Colorado governor's office. So we're gonna start with Pete. He's gonna give us an overview of Minnesota's, uh, the way Minnesota manages for results. We are then gonna hand it from Pete to Adam and from Adam to Heather. And I'll come back at the end with some questions for the panelists. And then finally, we'll open it up to Q&A for all of you. So Pete, why don't you take it away? Thanks, Kate. Um, so um, here in Minnesota, like a number of states, we have uh, our big picture goals, measurable goals in areas like uh, educational achievement and access to healthcare, uh, reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. And um, we're structured so that we have, um, for each of the, the major goals, we have um, either commissioners or deputy or assistant commissioners from state agencies who serve as the goal leads. Um, sometimes it's just one um, individual. In a lot of cases, um, since most of our goals are, are cross-cutting, um, there's, there's two or even three um, goal leads. And we have a central um, analytic um, team that provides um, support to them to you know, do everything from identifying what are sort of the leading um, metrics or indicators uh, of progress on whatever the, the longer term goal is um, and, and getting that in a format that enables them to, to make decisions and, and manage against. Um, uh, everything from, from supporting those individual teams to um, supporting um, decision making and, and oversight and alignment in the um, governor's office. Um, and that uh, most um, sort of potently um, takes the form of um, regular meetings with the governor's chief of staff, um, where the goal leads and, and relevant staff from their agencies um, come in. Um, the chief of staff um, you know, really sort of dictates the, the um, flow of the conversation, focuses on, on what we're doing, challenging, challenges folks to, to do things faster. Um, you know, in looking at the data, the progress that's being made, asks questions about, you know, isn't there an opportunity here? Um, you know, trying to, um, to identify uh, opportunities to move um, quicker. Um, and then um, we, we try and have as much um, follow-up as we can happen between uh, meetings. Um, we're on a cadence uh, at this point of about, um, for each goal, um, about once a, a quarter, um, sometimes a little bit uh, sooner than that. Um, and in the meantime, um, the goal leads are, are driving um, progress. We, um, in the context of COVID, um, pivoted a decent amount of our analytic capacity to, not surprisingly, um, the COVID response and um, actually set up a similar structure for um, each of our primary COVID response areas. So, you know, healthcare surge and critical care supplies and, and testing. Um, we, we have a similar structure where we have um, goal leads. Um, we have um, the central analytic team providing support to them. And whereas, you know, for the, for the sort of big picture goals, we had been, been doing more like a, a quarterly cadence for COVID, we've been doing more of like a daily cadence um, where it's just, you know, a lot faster. Um, and we've, we've figured out on the fly, um, if there's data that we don't have, we figure out how to, how to get it so that we can have it on a daily 
basis so that people can be um, directing resources and attention to the, to the areas that, that are most needed. Um, just in the last few weeks, we've, we've um, sort of been able to, to pull a little bit of our analytic support um, back into the longer term um, goals. And, and we've added a few goals, uh, you know, not surprisingly in the areas of you know, economic recovery and, and uh, job creation. Um, and you know, obviously, other sort of health health related um, functions. Um, so um, we've tried to have the the strategic plan, um, you know, follow the the needs of of the um, twin challenges or, or or more than twin challenges that we've had over the last few months, while also um, enabling us to to keep our eye on the longer term goals that the, the governor had set um, last year. I think I'll I'll maybe pause there, and I'm happy to to answer um, questions along the way as well. Great, let's hand it over to Adam. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Adam Jarvis, Deputy Director of Customer Focused Government. Um, waiting for the slides to come up. Yes, there we go. Uh, on this next slide, I wanna share with you, uh, we have really tried to build a system and culture around managing for results in driving that success. So the next slide shows you a visual display of how we have connected those different things. And really we have several different drivers that we're using throughout the state. On the far left, you see that those are our governor's priorities. And so as Pete was sharing, we, we share some similar priorities in, in transparent and efficient government, health and, and wellness for Tennesseans, um, you know, safety, et cetera. So there are you know five governor's priorities that are uh, being driven down from the top, but those also connect to each department's strategic plan. And so last year we went through a, a four-year planning process with all of those departments where they refreshed and revamped their four-year strategic plans. Those are then connected, those strategic plans are then connected to uh, one-year operational plans, which we call CFG plans. And that's that middle bar there. And you can find more about those on actually on our Transparent Tennessee website. And that is what uh, really is driving the day-to-day -day success of those operations of that department. And so um, those departments each year identify both initiatives and goals that they want to include in their plan. Uh, and, and we track and measure those and are, are working to put those into a dashboard that, that you'll be able to see on Transparent. Obviously, we know it, you know, one step down from that, we know that each office or division or program or initiative usually has its own strategy or plan in place. And so we want those to be connected and have a good you know, flow of information back into the operational plan, the strategic plan, and obviously connected to our governor's priorities. And then probably most importantly here, we connect it all the way back down to our individual performance plans. And so your annual review, your annual performance plan, that's what we mean by those IPPs here. And that is at the frontline level all the way up to you know, the highest officials in, in our state uh, to really monitor and track their performance against what we have said that we were wanting to do for that year and how that is connected to those other priorities and initiatives as, as they outline. On the next slide, you're going to see how this overlaps in terms of a time frame. So obviously the governor's priorities, those are some, some pretty lofty things that, and they take time to do. And so those are more long term. As I mentioned on the far right, those individual performance plans, that's one year. And so that, that's what we would consider short term. And those things that are going in there and how we're measuring the success of what we're trying to tackle in that year is in their plan. Obviously, the scope you see as well, the far left is a statewide scope all the way down to the individual scope, but trying to help see and, and help that employee connect and see the strategy for the state and why we're doing what we're doing and how what they're doing matters and ways that we can measure that. And then at the very bottom, you see the metrics. And, and that's what I was just speaking to is uh, identifying the ways that we can measure our progress in each of these individual drivers and how we can be successful in ensuring that these things happen and that we stay on, on track with our strategy. And then the last one I'll leave you with on this next slide is really, you know, I consider us to be probably a hybrid between uh, strategy A and B that Josh was sharing from the blueprint before. Uh, we have a really strong uh, process for performance improvement and strategy, and, and we also connect that to all of the other processes that I know that you all are very familiar with. And so here, this shows 
the timeline and, and the interconnection of when our generally general assembly is in session, when our budgets are drafted and created and departments start to review that with, with the governor's office and team. As I mentioned, their CFG plans, which are their one-year operational plans. And in those meetings, we're checking in on their four-year plans. And then at the very bottom in green there, you see, again, that employs individual performance plans. And so there's lots of interconnection between those, but we have found that, that it is extremely important for us to make sure that everybody has a clear picture and, and visibility into those strategies and understand how they connect and fold into that. Thanks, Adam, and then we'll turn it over to Heather. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, again, Heather Velasquez from the state of Colorado governor's office. Um, in Colorado, we have been building on this work uh, for several years now. So uh, there's a piece of legislation that was actually passed back in 2009. Uh, it's called the SMART Act, the State Measurement for Accountable, Responsive and Transparent Government. And that was really ratified and um, strengthened in 2013. Um, and it requires our state to do three main things, which is establish a performance management system for all of our executive branch agencies with clear measurable goals, um, implement process improvement tools throughout the state, and to train our employees on that process improvement and performance management system. Um, so under the previous administration, under Governor John Hickenlooper, um, who served from 2010 to 2018, um, he started to implement a lot of these, a lot of these um, initiatives. And so um, SMART Act requires us to have every executive branch agency publish a three-year performance plan. So this is similar to some of the work that Pete and Adam are, are chatting about. And on those performance plans, you know, we see high-level agency goals and then those penetrate all the way down to division and operational goals and kind of show a whole picture of what every agency is doing. Uh, we publish quarterly and annual reports on those performance plans. Um, but those are really kind of long, lengthy, very in-depth in the weeds reports um, that are really meant to be a conversation between an agency and um, their committees of reference in the legislature. So we use those in annual SMART Act hearings as well as in budget hearings um, and throughout the legislative session. Uh, what we've done in the Polis administration, uh, Governor Polis took office in 2019. Uh, we really built upon this uh, idea and tried to make a connection with all of these metrics and the goals that we set, not just between the legislature and our agencies, but also within our general constituency and to create a system um, where our metrics are more interactive and accessible um, and public facing to our citizens as well as um, our internal stakeholders. And so what we did in 2019 was we launched the governor's dashboard. And um, this is a public facing dashboard where we display metrics on a monthly basis for every one of our state agencies. We call them our wildly important goals. Uh, those are our goals that we set um, and display progress on in a uh, fiscal year uh, time bound. So we ask that every agency sets you know, up to three goals that go from an X metric to a Y metric by the end of the fiscal year. And then when you look into the performance plans, you can see how those goals build upon each other over a three year measure. Um, in last year, when we launched the dashboard, we were only showing lagging indicators so our overall um, outcome measure. Uh, this year, in the new fiscal year, we actually made enhancements to that dashboard, and we went from about 70 metrics to over 300 that we're now displaying on the dashboard because we added leading indicators to those overall wildly important goals. So now you can not only see um, the main uh, overall goal, but you can see the day-to-day -day work that the agencies are doing that uh, makes progress toward that goal. You know, we saw a lot of instances last year where there would be a goal that had to do um, with data that really only comes in once a year. And so you would sort of see this stagnant graph just staying in one spot. And then when data comes in, it makes a jump, but there's no insight into how that happened or why that happened. So we added these leading indicators so you can watch and follow a full picture of how we're actually accomplishing those goals. And it also serves the other purpose of, is there actually a correlation? Are we measuring the right thing? Are we doing the work that will actually push us over the line on those goals? Um, because if we get to a point mid-year and we've accomplished all of our lead measures, but we've made no progress on our overall goal, then we know we need to pivot. We know we need to measure different things, pull different levers, and ensure that we're really um, making that connection to our to the overall work that we want to do. Um, and you know, I love that uh, Adam covered the interconnection between um, the the legislative teams and the um, budget teams. This work really. Uh, is most impactful when we make those connections with our um, with our budget asks and with our um, legislative agenda. Uh, so we do some very similar work in Colorado in that space. Great, thank you, Heather. Um, 
So I'm going to take moderator's prerogative to ask some questions myself, and then uh, others, please feel free to chat participants into the chat function if you have questions. Um, let's start with Pete. Minnesota has been a leader in performance dashboards, and it sounds like Minnesota is seeking to align strategic planning with performance. Can you tell us a little bit about how that's going? You bet. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going um, it's going really well. I, I think the approach that we're taking is, is very similar to, to what Adam and, and Heather have, have taken. Um, we, in addition to sort of the, the goal-centric um, work, um, we do have agency strategic plans that do have um, performance uh, metrics in them. Many of them are sort of leading indicator um, type things for our big picture goals, um, but many of many of the goals, um, the performance goals um, for agencies, aren't necessarily covered by the bigger picture, and and so um, we've we've got those folded in um, to the agency plans as well. Um, I guess I, I would underscore, and and it was it was featured in the um, virtuous cycle graphic that um, Josh initially. Um, had shared um, that that you know you, you really can't, as Heather said, you can't make progress unless you have it embedded into these budget and policy and and uh, more management um, decision oriented um, processes and conversations. Thanks. And actually, on that, let's turn to Heather. Uh, you can you talk a little bit more about the importance of your work to align and coordinate evidence performance and the budget in particular? Yeah, absolutely. Um, What's uh, really great about the partnership in Colorado between the budget office and this work is actually when um, the uh, when the performance office was originally established a few years back, it was actually in the budget office. And so uh, Lauren Larson, our current director um, of the budget office, uh, used to lead this same work that we're doing. So we have a lot of interconnectivity there. Um, we really try to place focus on, you know, what are our main priorities? The governor has his both four priorities, which are um, environment and renewables, tax reform, um, and economic development, education and workforce, and health. And we try to lead with those main initiatives, find a connection within all of the agencies, and really push forward through those big bold four initiatives. Um, one of the ways that we've done that, particularly in the budget area this year, is that we've um, specifically connected the goals in those uh, working in the cabinet working groups that we've established around those areas to budget asks. So of course, as we're um, establishing our budget with all of our agencies, uh, they do have, you know, a limit for the number of initiatives they can ask for new funding for. And what we did this year um, was a system where we allowed an agency to push for an additional uh, above and beyond uh, funding mechanism that was connected directly to the goals of those working groups in the board four. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. I'm going to turn to Adam real quickly. Can you share a little bit more about how your work at the customer focused government initiative is supports budgeting and the office of evidence and impact as Tennessee is focused on evidence based budgeting. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, really excited. We have a lot of the team members from the office of evidence and impact on the phone today and want to give them a big shout out for all of their work. And as with all states, we have had to dramatically shift how we do that process, and, and they've done a phenomenal job. Um, as Heather was sharing, we also have our Office of Evidence and Impact attached to our budget office. And where I think we have a unique relationship is we are obviously, as I shared on the customer-focused government side, focused on driving performance improvement and finding ways to lower operating costs and provide the best possible service. And so we have lots of metrics and standards and strategic planning and performance improvement. And this ties very nicely with what they're doing in, in terms of connecting that to evidence for a department and showing that the, the programs that a department are doing are getting the outcomes that are, are sought and that are either peer reviewed or that they know there's evidence behind. And so I think that that, again, is showing Tennessee's commitment to, we want to do what's right, but we want to keep going down the path of doing what we know is working and tying that in and making sure that we have the values and metrics in place to where we can help those agencies and teams that do need assistance or need clarity. And I think that the work between our two offices are only you know, going to get stronger over the years, but is a great add to the state in terms of what we're doing for the citizens. Thank you very much. Um, so we have two minutes left. Do we have any questions from the audience? Oh, there, look at that. Okay, so we've got one. Um, when have states focused on population metrics versus program metrics, for example, in unemployment, in the unemployment rate versus the number of people graduating from a specific program? Um, Pete, Adam, Heather, do one of you wanna take that? 
I guess my quick answer would be we we do both. We we tend to pick population metrics that are sort of the headline thing that we're trying to move um, and have program metrics that often you know have multiple program offices in the same agency and, and multiple agencies even um, folding into that larger goal. Um, I would say one experience we've had and we've had this over the last two administrations is when you're when you're sort of initially setting uh, goals based on population metrics, there is this sort of nervousness among the you know elected and, and appointed leaders saying, well, but we can't unilaterally control that. That some of that is influenced by things beyond our control. Um, and and you know it's it's sort of this balance between um, you know help, helping them understand if if we're if we're just focused on the program pieces, we may be missing things that are gonna that are gonna drive um, productive change on, on those bigger things that are actually the things that our residents um, care about. I would say in uh, Colorado, a specific example of this that we do is um, in our education and workforce working group, um, some of the goals that we've set. And I would look at in this specific example in the question, you know, unemployment rate, maybe in a specific industry versus the folks um, graduating from programs. Um, I would look at the, you know, employment rate as sort of the long term outcome and the graduation and, and training. Uh, more of a lead measure and an output towards um, that long term outcome. So one of the goals that we have this year. Um, you know, in employing more folks in key industries is increasing training and increasing um, apprenticeships and internships. And so different types of education across different spectrums. And then, you know, to actually see, is there a correlation? Like once we train those folks, do they stay in Colorado? Do they move outside? Some are, are people coming from other states with training and actually, um, you know, working in Colorado, like seeing, is there actually a correlation and causation there? Um, and, and, and kind of digging into the evidence on, on that level. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Heather, Pete, and um, Adam. We appreciate you taking the time today, Adam, particularly since you're doing it from a renovation site. Um, we hope that you all will apply some of the approaches that you've heard from Pete, Adam, and Heather today in your own states. Uh, results for America can help with these strategies. Reach out to us or any of the panelists following the event if you want to follow up with some more details.